I'll be working on a 2009 Dodge Ram 2500 diesel. We're going to be doing the upper and lower ball joints. The customer took it to a lineman shop and they told him that his ball joints had excessive play. So we're going to go ahead and start doing that today. I'm gonna compress this just a little bit, get the brake fluid back. Cause sometimes you get a little wear groove on the rotor and the brake pad gets caught on the edges of the rotor and you can't pull off the caliper. So it's a 15, 16 socket. All right, so sometimes these are rusted on there and you gotta tap them to break the rust loose. So you gotta tap this part right here. If you don't tap this part, you tap anywhere else, you can damage the rotor and the rotor's on there. Okay. All right, so this is what you see this rust right here. Yeah. Along this whole surface. Just those little contact places is where it rusts out and it gets stuck. But the worst one is right here on this lip. Mm -hmm. That's usually where- Is that it's, where it was stuck? That's where it was stuck at. Here's a better example. You can see this little dark spots. Yeah. Those little dark spots right there. That's where the rust was completely holding on to that rotor. So a lot of manipulation. If all fails, just hit the rotor and get it off and you may have to just replace it because sometimes they're rusted so bad that you have to just get a like just get a hammer. that one to yeah. get it off and then get a brand new one. Yeah. So I like to grab the lug nuts right here and I pull back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. And if there's play in there, the wheel bearing is bad. If I hear any grinding noises, the wheel bearing is bad. If I feel any slop in it, the wheel bearing is bad. But now, I already checked it, so this wheel bearing seems to be in good shape, just a little dirty and rusty. We can clean that off with a little wire brush and get all that taken off. So we're gonna disconnect this ABS line because the wheel bearing has to come off before we can get to the axle and then pull the axle out to replace these ball joints. There's oh. your plug. Oh, that came off a little too easy. What's wrong with that? No, this is something else. <laughs> I have no idea. It's just hanging there, broken and loose. So this has nothing to do with the ABS. Okay. Now, I know people are gonna say, why well, you could just pull it off of right here, where this bolt is, but I've broken it off here before because of the corrosion. So instead of doing that with the good wheel bearing, I'll just go ahead and pull it off right here. It's not that much harder, believe so it or not. it's easier to pull it off all of that instead of breaking that on that. Instead of breaking the sensor, and then now you have to definitely replace the wheel bearing. Oh. So a lot, most of the time there's rust that builds up around this little seal and it, the part that goes in, it's, it's metal, and uh, you can't get this off. You can take the screw off easily, but you can't get this to come out. It's plastic on the inside, so it's just gonna snap right off. So for me, it's easier just to pull this off. 
it's uh, 18 millimeter for the wheel bearing bolts and you have four of them one two three and four now hopefully it comes off easily if it doesn't there's a trick to get these off but you have to start the truck but for now let's see if we can get it off It's a uh, one and eleven sixteenths inch socket. All right. Normally, these things are stuck so bad, you have to get a socket with an extension. Let's bring it up over here so people can see. So what I do is, I get a socket. If, they're, if this is completely rusted on, I put it on the bolt, which is right here. And then I put an extension right over here or right here. And I get inside the truck and I turn it over and I turn the steering wheel and the hydraulic pressure, when you turn it in, will push on this bolt outward and it'll loosen these uh, hubs. That's how you get them off if they're completely rusted on there. But today we got lucky. So now, you just gotta take the bolt off the right of the way. Tap the back of the U-joint right here, and the axle should pop right out. That's in good shape still. See, it has some good it's solid movement. Stiff. Yeah, very it's stiff right here. Mm -hmm. And there's grease in there, so this is in good shape still. 15, 16. Back up, took off the nut. That nut was to hold it from falling off. Oh. And now you got the thing loose. Okay. So that movement we had earlier of the tire, when I checked it, it made a clunky noise. And here's your clunk. Yeah, it moves. It articulates. Now the bottom ones, it's a little bit bad. It's just starting to go. Okay. This bottom ball joint to get it out. Mm -hmm. You got to remove this C-clip right here. All right, so, so you can get this ball joint tool around here nicely. I like to just go ahead and pop off this little boot. It's just a little dust seal. And it's not held on, held on by anything, just these little ridges. So it pops right off. Put that to the side. And then now, go right around it. No problems. This ball joint goes down. Not up. So how come you didn't put this through there? Because because if you mar the surface of this part where the ball joint goes, um, you won't have 
a full 360 degrees of it being a press fit and it'll cause the ball joints to either be loose or get loose. And you can't really repair this, so you'll probably have to replace the whole axle since it's actually welded onto the axle. Oh, so you're just think, so you're just gonna do it this way. See, if I have to mess up the thread here, it's a lot easier to fix these threads than it was to fix this piece. Okay. And I could buy this bolt right here for twenty-five dollars a replacement. So this ball joint has just a very little play inside the socket, but it's still nicely greased, not in too bad a shape because mostly the bad, the bad one is mostly the top one. This one, easy to turn. This one, no slop at all. Very hard to turn. Can't do nothing with that. That's a good brand new U joint. Again, this one, just sloppy. Could even just do this and it moves. So it needed it anyway. So I like to try to take off the old boot. Um, uh, this is a rubber part on here. Here, I'm just gonna tap it, get this ball joint straight. So this is completely straight. A little easier to take off. Get it right between the rubber piece and this uh, metal lip and just pry it off a little bit, very lightly. And comes right off. So this is part of the ball joint kit still. This one right here, you wanna compress on this lip right here. So that fits perfectly. And you push it back in. Now, normally ball joints have Zerk fittings, which is a grease fitting that you could insert grease with. But if it does, you want that Zerk fitting to face this way. So it's easy access with the tube. You could just put more grease in it. But since we don't have, since we don't have a Zerk fitting to go on here to put grease in, we don't, it don't matter which way you clock this ball joint. It just has to go up in. I know, but I wasn't thinking of that certain combination, and I was afraid that this was gonna slip right here. It doesn't have nothing to locate it to keep it in one spot. Okay. It's just two flat surfaces, and hopefully it doesn't slip. But it is one.
What do you mean by the castle? Like so that's the so it's called a castle nut. So it goes. And this is the castle. Down. Yes, because the cotter pins they go in between these little holes, and that's what locks the nut in there. Okay, so according to the manual I saw for this certain truck, this top one right here is gonna be 70 foot pounds, and the bottom one's gonna be between 140 and 160 foot pounds. I like to tighten it to 140, and then put the cotter pin into the next hole. Sometimes you gotta tighten it a little bit more to get the cotter pin to line up. But for now, we'll tighten up this top one to 70 foot pounds. Okay, just snug it up and I'm going to turn the bottom one so they both go evenly. Okay, I put that one at 70 in the bottom and then go back up to the top and turn it to 70. Now. Okay, that is better. And it looks like I might have a lightning for my cotter pin that goes on the top. Get that in right away if you can. I'm gonna show you the right way to install a cotter pin. Go ahead. There's the very edge of the hole. No, I can't see. Uh -huh. And that's how that goes. So you got one short side and one long side to the cotter pin. I see a lot of people do both sides and bend them, and then when you go to try to take it back out, forget it. It's useless. You can never get that cotter pin to line right up just fine and push it right back out. All right, so now we're gonna torque it down to 140 foot-pounds. <laughs> so I just cleaned the very end right here. The seal rides right here on this little bit of grease. I like to clean it, but I leave a little, it wasn't very dirty at all. So I leave a little bit of grease there so the seal doesn't uh, get ripped or nothing. Because those seals suck to replace, I replaced them before. And then you're gonna put it in, make sure it's even with the hole and be very gentle going in. When you go to reinstall your hub, make sure your ABS uh, line coming out is gonna be straight up. One forty nine. 